doing this now, right? We're not like drinking bros. We just kind of start talking, and then whenever it. All right. When I started working for those people. Okay. um, I showed up, and they were like, "What's your call sign?" So in the teams, my last name's Care. I was Care Bear, and they said, "You can't have that." (laughs) There's a lady. That a name Karen who has that. And I was like, well, shit. Her call sign was Care Bear? Care Bear. <laughs> so I had no Karen. clue. Yeah. <laughs> so what had happened was, is, you know, when you transition out of the military, you know, um, wife, son, military, you know, they're not really as supportive as you think they would be when you're transitioning and out about 12 years, you know, E6 getting out of the SEAL teams, you know, you're not going to make it, you're not going to make it. So, you know, that obviously built up a lot of nervousness and a lot of negative energy and originally when I got out of the SEAL teams I went over to Blackwater and I was actually on the same crew where Scott Halverson a good friend of mine the guys that got literally you know mm-hmm. burned and hung yeah, yeah I was supposed to be on that trip but as I was I finished the training and I was waiting to go I was going to be on that trip another group called me and said hey we're interested in you for this and like I said then when I you know did went through that training I showed up I hadn't slept you know because you're nervous yeah, couple days. I had had a cash shirt on because I'm I'm like Johnny Cash pre Joaquin Phoenix, cool yeah, like hey. real Johnny Cash. Back I'm, in the day, like I'm older off. than both you ladies, so yeah. So I like old school <laughs> barely, Johnny. Barely. Yeah. <laughs> so um, old school Johnny's the and shit. there was two guys on my team. They were two other team guys. They were like, "We're gonna call you Cash." I like and it. the running joke was, "Is I didn't know why because I was I was so freaking tired." You were like, okay, I like, fine. and then two hours later, I looked down. I'm like, oh, that's why. And, and that's how it came. So, God, that's, that's way better than cool. Care Bear, though. Like, come on, let's just be real. I Cash, was you know what's like funny is out. a lot of the old team guys still call me Care Bear, and I'm Do like, they? yeah, but Care Bear was a savage <laughs> man. I don't want to be that guy. Sure, like, drinking and well, that, okay. was, that was back in the day days, right? Pre my wife, yeah, team so, days, yeah, p- team mm-hmm. days. I mean, I met my wife when I was Care Bear, and I had to change that shit real quick. I remember how my husband was back in team days. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Now he's a war on a team. He's changed a lot more, yeah. you know? Yeah. Now you got to grow up. Now I've, Care, yeah. I love that Care Bear was the savage. Do you know what I mean? It was. And Cash is well, like, well, you know, you have the only way Care down. Bear can be, like, mainly, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to be the, the savage. The Care Bears had different, you know, like, there was Rainbow, and there Correct. was this and that. I was Savage Care Bear. That's, that's what they said. I was just like I'm picturing it right now. I wanted to be drawn. It's like a you know, it's like a kind of gray black color, and it has like you know, like a savage dude on the chest, you know, on the belly. I was like a little short version of Dan. I just didn't give a shit what I looked like, (laughs) but I was an animal, you know. I mean, I love Dan, but I just said it already. You know, we didn't have to. (laughs) That's there's your visualization. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) Well, let's. We should probably get to the beginning then. Okay. You know, so. Where'd you grow up? Where are you from? Kind yeah. of a little bit about your, you know, your background, and then what made you join the military? We can talk about that a little bit. Okay, so uh, obviously my name's Ray Care, 48 years young. I'm a Baltimore native. Um, grew up from a divorced family from the earliest time I can remember. Actually, the the earliest childhood memory I have, and this is horrible. I know I'm a Jerry Springer show. Is my parents were divorced, uh, and they were arguing over me. But I still, to this day, like, I can't remember what I had for lunch two weeks ago. Yeah. But I can remember those two arguing of who was going to take me. Because, like, he, so didn't, he didn't really want me. She didn't really want me. And mm. um, I went with my father, who was a, a biker, womanizer, brawler, drinker. Uh, long story short, that was a pretty abusive relationship. Okay. And he was murdered when I was 11. And then I had to shift focus and go live with my mom. You know, and that was... That's a angry, lot. yeah, angry kid. Didn't do good in school. Drugs, drinking, got locked up a few times. You know, story goes on and on sure. until uh, I finally figured out, you know, that it was time to make some changes. Because if I didn't make changes, you know, that's why I ended up joining the military. Yeah, yeah. Um, is you know, I was 19 years old, and I, I I speak all over the country now, doing all these motivational speaking. And I, I don't like the word motivational. It's more of like inspirational or yeah. you know, self discipline class uh courses that i put on and yeah. i looked in the mirror and i had come back because i was playing lacrosse at a college and i was drunk and i don't know if i was on pot i was on something but i looked oh, in the she mirror says on pot there you go i say oh. on weed i say he does oh, weed. on weed does weed, on does weed, weed. On weed. i said does weed oh. i was i was i was jacked up on something and i looked in the mirror and i saw my father i didn't see me and that's like, you know, Jason Redmond's a very good friend of mine. He talks about yeah. life ambushes. Well, I talk about getting mortared because I've actually been mortared before, you know, incoming shells. You guys do a podcast together? Yes, okay. the Overcome and Conquer yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, And we've talked about this. And it was like the first real, mor- well, I guess my father being murdered was the first one. Yeah. Then living with my mother who really didn't want me was the second one. Mm. 
And then the third one was, you know, when you look in the mirror, you know, you should see a reflection of yourself. But I, I saw, you know, guy, beard, reddish beard, which I have a beard now. Yeah. Um, big guy who was abusive, who, you know, abused his body with drugs, with drinking, was a womanizer, you know, Harley rider. And then I said, enough's enough. And that's when I made the conscious decision, you know, I got to do something. Yeah. So I went to the recruiters. <laughs> And I said, you know, I'm looking around and I applied and I, I bombed, you know, you have to take this ASVAB test. It's like a aptitude test mm-hmm. to see how you rank. And I'm not a real smart guy when it comes to taking tests. I'm more of a hands-on kind of guy. And sure. it's like four Ladies. sections too that like, yeah. cause you did, you know, like yeah. mechanical, oh, yes. like, you know, arithmetic, it, reading and writing, like math, well, the math. all the stupid Like ones. if a train's going 50 miles an hour east and one's going 50 miles an hour west, one of the, I don't, I've never been on a train. I don't know. Like, so is this just to find out where to place you? Where it's to not place like you for jobs. And branches too. And branches, Correct. yeah. Okay. So, so originally yeah. I went for Air Force and they laughed at me. I mean, I scored horrible. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was able to make it. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, no offense. I didn't want to go Army. I didn't want to go Marines. Yeah. I didn't know enough about them. Right. So it was Navy next. And they said... You can be a medic or a barber. And I was like, man, that's a pretty wide that's spectrum. That is a wide spectrum, though. And I was like, well, I'm not Wait, interested. how a medic, though, with the yeah. scores? Because you don't need, I guess, mechanical skills to <laughs> okay. be a pecker <laughs> checker or whatever it is. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. I was like, to this day, and, you know, medics to this day are like, that's unheard of. But yeah. I, don't know. I don't know what the combined scores for that. So. Yeah. I said, okay, well, what about going, I don't like either one of those rates. And they're like, well, you can be undesignated, which is a boatswain mate. So mm-hmm. I went in as seaman care. That was my actual, that's an E1. Okay. Yeah, that it, seaman care. That was not. All right. I yeah. mean, obviously that's a running joke with the Navy. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the rank that you're called. So right. there's an airman, fireman, yeah. or seaman. And uh, I joined and I saw this pamphlet about being a Navy SEAL and they're like, listen, Number one, you're not, the recruiter, worst recruiter I've ever had in my life. You're sure, not going to really? make, he said, you're not going to make it. And two, you're not even in the ballpark for, um, you know, the aptitude test to make it. And I was like. Do they do that on purpose? I, you know, I don't think so. What, the okay. Because usually. No, just to get like a fire. Like you're I, that's what I, 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 maybe he did, but I mean. I feel it like. It kind of worked, didn't it? it? Oh, it worked. Because my whole life, you know, and I, I, I watch my language when I'm talking to women is my whole life has just been based off of like all these impactful moments that have caused pain Mm -hmm. Um, and I talk about it now I have a process where I I profit from pain Mm -hmm. but um, my mindset is fuck it fuck you and that's what I say all the time like attack the hill it's and it's not when I say f you it's not to you it's actually to myself it's like you know like fuck it I've I'm here I can do this and then or fuck what you think yeah and the fuck you is right you can do this don't let this guy just like your mom and everybody else tell you you're worthless so I joined the Navy and I went what's called undesignated and I went to what's called neutral duty. So you have sea duty, you have shore duty. So sea duty, you're on a ship, shore duty, you're on the land. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. I was going to say that. but I know. I figured. I was about But then to there's neutral duty. Now, yeah. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> yeah, what is that? You're, so, you're floating. So I went out on a boat every day and I came back. Uh-huh. So Got it. Um, it was... I ranked really high in boot camp, and I guess it was kind of like a good deal. I had no clue. I showed okay. up and uh, said, hey, I want to be a SEAL. What do I do? And they're like, well, you got to do this, this, and this. And Did I they make a- you retake the ASVAP at all? I had to take it two other times. I was wondering, because <laughs> even in well, special forces, guys, because you guys had to learn languages. Yes. So that's why they need it higher, because yeah. you guys literally are fluent in other countries' languages that you're training. Some. Yeah. A little shaku maku maku shi. Yeah, we can get I mean. a few. Not a few. You can get around. <laughs> you you know have that mean. You have to have uh, enough. Shaku maku maku shi is pretty much slang in Iraqi for like, it's like Lily ghetto talk for what's up. Oh, okay. <laughs> but cool, it, cool. it, 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 it diffuses worse, situations. But yeah. sure, no. Sure. But I took, I, like, I, I had yeah, a wait. I, I had a wait. It was either six months or a year to take it the second time. I studied my ass off. Good wasn't drinking. You. Missed it by one point. Mm. I swear to God. True story. One point. So then I had to wait another six months, and I this time I asked for external help, like instead of just doing it myself. Yeah, yeah. And I did it. Good. And, you know, I think the journey, you know, the, the struggle is what makes the story. You know, I, like, I don't care, like, like you know, Drinking Bros and your guys' podcast. I want to hear the story of how you got there, you know? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. that's where I come through. Like, when I speak now, people always ask me, are you a motivational speaker? Are you an inspirational speaker? Are you a fitness guy? I'm like, no. I'm a pain coach and people go, what? So if you've ever had mental, physical, emotional, social, and even sexual pain Mm -hmm. in your life, I can relate. 
Yeah, yeah. And I just learned how, and this is my equation, pain equals growth, growth mm-hmm. equals power, power equals knowledge, and knowledge equals profit. But profit isn't always from a monetary yeah, yeah. standpoint, mm-hmm. you know? I got my mic a little low. This is the, oh, one of the sorry, few times ahead, where I feel tall. <laughs> um, <laughs> he did tell me yeah. I had tall energy. Tall oh, energy. Like we're going to talk yeah. about that. Yeah, I yeah. did. I thought you were sick, like six foot. Well, yeah, because he's like, oh, Tiffany's tall, right? Ross is tall. I'm like, he's tall. He's tall. Ross is very tall. Yeah. Yeah. And when I met you, I literally was like, I went, hey. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I just, I, I thought. But don't I tell you, I read taller. Yeah. People it's think I'm how? tall. Like when people ask me how tall <laughs> well, I, I am. I put my chair up very that, tall. That, that works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> people ask me how tall I am all the time. And when I tell them, they're like, really? I'm like. I, yeah. I didn't think you were your height no. when you walked in. It hurts. No, not in a bad way. But I'm just saying like. It's not after good. After looking. Yeah. Well, well yeah. how do you think I felt? You know. I mean, well, yeah. But you still, like I said, well, you still carry yourself. Wait, but girls can It's different with, with women. Yeah. Guys though. can't. Like guys perfect example. Yeah. Perfect example. How tall are you? 5'8". 5'8". So I'm 5'7". So. You're not married, no disrespect to the hubby, but you've got the big pumps on, right? You with me? Yeah. Okay, we're in a bar. I Heels. walk up to you. Women have a problem with shorter guys, not me. Like, my wife is 5'3", but when she puts on her pumpy pumps. Oh, yeah. She's oh, yeah. Up. Like, it's, she's up here. Yeah. And I, I told her, I don't mind. I'm secure. It's yeah. women who it have an issue women. with it. It yeah, is. Exactly. You know, and I'm oh. a little Tasmanian devil. I'll fight to the death <laughs> for, for the old, my, my girl. Yeah, good yeah. on you. Yeah. That's um, all that matters. <laughs> exactly. But I just was like, I fucking told you. Like, I tell everyone I have really tall energy. Every well, time I'm like, Well, and I five, listen to you guys, but, you know, I'm seeing you guys sit up, but, you know, you're a lot, you're very powerful. You know, you demand respect. I mean, it's just how they, how you guys talk, you know? So take it as a compliment. But oh, from do. a guy, it hurts a little more when women are Sorry. like, oh. like, if you, if I'm expecting you six feet tall, right? Right. And again, you know, I love... And you're super hot. I'm like, okay. And then she's shorter. I still go, yeah. Correct. Right. When it's a guy, you're like. The problem mm. is women have, women have me, equated though, it to certain things, though, like power yes. yeah, or like status. And that's not true. It's sometimes it's just a, you know, preference. Yeah, it is. And for example, like I like super tall guys, but my mm. husband's a little bit taller than me. So when we do put pumps on, we're the same height. Yeah. And we joke around about it, but I don't care. Cause well, I'm the shortest guy my wife's ever been with. And I told her, this is my opening line for. When I met my wife. She's 5'3". Like, no no guy is really shorter than Yeah, they're called midgets. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but I'm not, like, you're not shorter than me. But she did. She told me, like, on her first couple dates, you know, first she thought my name was Greg, not Ray, after, like, the third date. Right. We had, I had to pull out the ID. That's another whole story. Do I look like a Greg? You just didn't want to correct her. um, I told her, you could do better, but you could do worse. That's what I told her. She was like, I don't know what that means. I'm like, I try to set the bar and I see plus, try to dazzle you, you know? (laughs) That's so true. You could do better, but you could do worse. Yeah. Here's the thing. As long as, thing. as long as a guy like can hold it to me, like can hold his own, doesn't yeah. take shit. You know what I mean? And like, and sometimes you hear guys who are shorter have like short man syndrome. Yeah. As long as they don't have that, that's like constantly projecting and feeling oh, the yeah. need to like put other people down. Like it's fine. Yeah. Sometimes that's like the one of the bigger issues with it, right? Yeah, it is. Is you do have guys that are really insecure about themselves because they've been dealing with it their whole life, and so they act a certain way, and people are like, "Oh, that makes it worse." I dated a girl six foot two once. Good on you. Well, and this was when I was young in the teams, but, but she was like, like thing. it didn't bother me. It she was, I actually thought it was a joke. I, we had been doing a lot of diving. We were going through a diving phase and uh-huh. we, afterwards we go to a bar and this, she was like a volleyball player. I mean, this is, I was 24, 25 volleyball years players old, are yeah, like but she was really pretty, yeah. Really, yeah. really pretty. She came over and I literally told her, I said, you know, get the fuck away. I thought it was a joke. Like, <laughs> like cause she was a lot you younger than me. Somebody and set she you went up, yeah. over to the other side of the bar and the bartender was like, Hey man, that was a really Asked kind of my mood move. because like she's she was here. asking about you, so I walked over. And even when she was sitting on the bar stool, she was like taller than me. You know, she was tall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and hey. I said, "Hey, I'm sorry. I thought this was a joke and yeah. hurt her feelings." And I we dated for a couple months, Good but man. like when we go out, it was like. But when I was you, fine with it. Yeah, that's when all you that told her to get the fuck out of here. She was yours. You think that's what it oh, was? Oh God, yeah. Really? Yes, Sometimes right? girls do work that way where yeah. we want. I mean, it's not even just girls. It's, it's guys and girls, right? Oh, yeah. The minute that you can't have what you want, you want it more. Well, that's that's, that's true because that's how it was thing. when yeah. I, I finally fell for my wife. Like, I remember we were both at a gym running on a treadmill. And she's a beast. You know, my wife, Trisha. Oh, yeah. I love you. I love you, baby. Um, we're running. And I looked over at her. And I don't know how the conversation came up. And I said, well, you know, I'm not just seeing you exclusively. And she didn't skip a stroke. And she goes, you think I'm only seeing you? And I was like, oh, oh no. And I mean, well, we got off the, the thing. I was like, listen, here's the deal. I want to go exclusive with you right now. <laughs> right now. And she was know. like, okay. Mm, you know, and I was like, I'll, oh, let's get yeah. a contract signed. That's exactly what my husband did. You know, that's you what, I, look, I got her tattooed on my face. Oh, yeah. 
So, okay, She's so you core, by the way. Uh, were studying. Yes. Your ass off. Yep. You finally passed. Finally passed. ASVAP, and then what happened? Went off the buds, and, and I did it. I started with my class, and I finished with 138 of us started, 16 original graduated. We had Damn. 51. I call them iron horses, guys, that start with their class and finish. Yeah. But like I said, I th- you know, some people showed up, and I, what I don't understand about people is like, you know, I did the show, The Selection, and, and yeah. all these other cool things. Is with Bert, right? With Bert. Yeah, Bert. Oh, I know. Oh, don't, Bert. don't get him started don't start on me with Bert. Bert. I'm mad at Bert today. Now, I'm, look. I'm mad at Bert today. Usually, I love oh, Bert. We have feelings about Bert, too, so go ahead. Yeah. Oh, but, I love Bert. No, yeah. I know. We love <laughs> Sorry. I thought he'd have a cooler name. Right? Doesn't he look like he'd be like a Logan? I or know. A, Actually, I feel like he made Bert cool, because every time I heard of Bert before, I thought of well, Bert Ernie. I think of but, Bert Reynolds. I mean, there's only oh, two yeah. cool Berts in the world. Yeah. But, um, Christ, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, Where were we you, and then Where you Yeah, went. so your selection, you were so, talking but about. But my point is, is I didn't understand how people could quit so easily yeah, yeah, yeah. and so quickly on something that, you know, they, they work so Trains hard. So if they hard really on. work so hard, yeah. I mean, like, I went through, because with me, it's all about mindset. It's all about, yep. I just program myself, like with my wife. I program, I'm going to get this woman. Yep. I'm going to be an ABC seal. Yeah. I'm going to get this part on this TV show. And I just do it. I mean, now if I can just... I'm going to make a million, you know, make the money, you know, it's, it's coming, but yeah, I just, I don't take no for an answer, you know? And like people say, you know, you know, failing, is it an option, man? Failing, failing is the option. Failing will I happen. always Absolutely. fail. I just don't quit. I just right. shift yes. fire. You know, failure is not an option, man. I, I get up on stage and I literally tell people I have, whether it's an hour or 45 minutes to tell you how many times I failed and effed up. Mm-hmm. And that's what gives me my creds to be up here. And the people are just like, because they can relate to that. Correct. You know, I yeah. don't get up there and beat my chest and say, I'm a new seal. Yeah. I get up I and I, I eat yeah. excellence. Yeah. No, man, yeah. I get up every day and I'm, some days I don't want to get out of bed. Some days, you know, I'm tired. Some days I, I want to just sit on the couch and do nothing, but I won't allow myself because of how far I've come in the journey. You know, it's, yes. um, I recently just, I have coaching clients and there's this thing it's called 4k weeks. And Lily, what it is, you remember the old bubble test you used to take where you yep. circled in? Yeah. You, you go to this, it's called four, four weeks.com or four K weeks.com. And they say right now, and it changes day to day, but the average life expectancy for a, a male is 80, which I think it's older and a female is 75. You punch in your what? date of when you were born mm-hmm. and it fills in the bubbles exactly where you are in your life. And you can see how long you have to live. So my thing is, is I have that on my wall right now. And every day I get up smart, whenever I doubt, I go in there and go, man, you won the lottery. You're up. And that's what I tell people. Get up like you won the lottery and just attack the hill. That's where I came up with, you know, my conquer mindset Mm -hmm. because I break it down. I'm a numbers guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I know, I know that I literally have 11,000 and change left days left in my life to live. Damn. I, I can do the math for according you guys to too statistics, afterwards. Yeah. According to statistics. Yeah. But fuck it, fuck you. I'm going to live longer than. I, I'm going to go for yeah, 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I just, I do that with everything. Like, people get up and their mindset is tomorrow, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. One of my best friends went to sleep at 47. He didn't wake up. Yeah, yeah. And he was sleeping downstairs. He wasn't even with his wife, you know? So, oh, I don't want to yeah, be that yeah. guy, you know? And that's yeah. what I tell people is, life's short, man. Enjoy mm-hmm. it, you know? I'm yeah. not going to be one of these guys that gets, like, it's funny. Like, you know, there's Matt Best and... There's a bunch of guys that I really like in Burt. And what I like about those guys is they can be serious. They're very intelligent, but they have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the guys, like I just, I had this conversation with us. We're the guys that are never going to go on the Joe Rogan podcast because they want the one guy that's, I get up. It's easy for them to package. And and I just, it's, I'm one dimensional. I'm not one dimensional. You know, I, I don't just get up and run or talk about how, oh, I don't do that. I, I like to have fun. I like to be emotional. You I mean, a balanced take life. Yeah, you got to. Man. <laughs> Dick you know, out it's all about the four, the four F bombs family, fitness, finance, and faith. That's why I got a tattoo. <laughs> this is what right God here. says. But have you noticed, though, that it seems to be a very big, like, military mentality mindset, though, kind of, too? Oh, yeah. Is what I, even I grew up with, and my husband, is that you worked your ass off. Oh, yeah. Right? And then you would go out into the field and you train, and then you got done with that phase of training. And I remember all of us guys were just like, oh, yes, right? We worked our ass off. We yeah. were good. And then we partied and had fun, right? Mm-hmm. And then we would study. Yep. And you'd kind of go back to this grind of like doing everything that yep. you had to do just to survive. Oh, yeah. Because if you're just going, going, going nonstop. Yeah. Right? And some of these guys would really get in their head mentally, which we were talking about. So you know the PJ pipeline. Yes. You've heard of PJs, yeah. right? So they had me go down and I was observing it. 
um, mainly to see how females would be integrated in mm -hmm. this later on down the road. And I remember I watched so many guys quit during like one of the simplest like underwater mm -hmm. like sessions, oh, yeah. smoke sessions that oh, was yeah. like really easy now that they had. And I said, do you mind me if I talk to the quitters really quick and just ask them some questions? They're like, no, go ahead. The quitters. No, the quitters. They, they, are. <laughs> Excuse they, me. All, they all quit. Quitter, quitters. quitter number one. <laughs> they all quit. But none of them had names. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah, and yeah. I just asked them. I said, hey, do you guys want me asking really quick, why did you guys quit? Yeah. And the number one thing was mentality, mm -hmm. right? They yeah. all were like, I didn't think I could do it anymore. Yeah. But I asked them, I said, well, your, was your body still pushing? Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. I didn't think I could, but my body kept going. Yeah. I, and, they're like, and they all kind of had an epiphany right there in that moment that they realized they could probably still make it through this training if they just had the mental fortitude to keep pushing it past. Exactly. There was no, like, for everyone else, they knew they were going to fail. They might actually fail some. Yeah. And they were not going to quit no matter what. Yeah. And that's just so, poor programming on themselves. You correct. know, like, when I went through, you know, it's a voluntary program. No, it's not. No, it's not. I was selected to do this. If I don't make this, literally, my mindset was, then I'm going to prison or I'm dying. That's yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, I know that sounds harsh, but you have yeah. to you so have options, to set the yeah. stakes that high. You know. Yeah. I also made uh, true story. My mother, who didn't think I would make buds, I paid for her ticket to come out non-refundable. So she showed up there, and like I said, I told the admiral, and I waved to her when I did it. But uh, I love that was just it. Just you know, it's just more fuel for the fire. Yeah, sure. You know, like I yes. said, because that's the thing. People use their pain is a crutch. I use it as my superpower, you yeah. know, cause everybody has that a superpower and that kryptonite. And all I do is I've, I've just re, uh, reverse engineered my, yes. my thought process. And everybody's like, you know, just focus on the good. No man, focus on the bad and learn how to bring that up. You know, like fear and pain and, Correct. and doubt. I love it. I mean, if every day, you know, I tell people if you're not uncomfortable with, some aspect in your life, family, fitness, finance, and faith, you know, family, people are like, how could you be uncomfortable with your family? I don't know. Like I'll still do videos of me dancing around with my daughter and I know that's going to affect my social media or my status as an, I don't care mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, I'm building memories with her, yeah, yeah. you know, and things like that. And fitness, you know, I'm doing all these crazy challenges right now. I told him, told even Bert Kuntz is uh, following me now. I started this the day <laughs> that the coronavirus started. I was like, they're closing down gyms. Uh huh. And I'm going to start doing, I'm, I'm doing these 10,000 rep clubs. So we're okay. all, we're at nine oh, weeks that's of, right. he is doing that. Yeah. Too. Yeah. He's doing it now. He got in shape okay. now, but who did it first? <laughs> yeah. Me. Yeah. Me. <laughs> Bert, Bert loves Love that. Bert. Way to jump on the bandwagon, yeah. Bert. <laughs> they fuel each other with these. But everybody's doing yeah, it. And yeah. I'm doing it in the garage, you know? So. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think the mind is kind of a scary slash, um, powerful, powerful thing, right? Depending on how yeah. you deal with it. So when she was saying they they quit because they just didn't think they could do mm -hmm. it, that little thing is so scary. It's like with running, right? Like your body can go so far. Oh, yeah. It's insane, right? Yeah. The mind. one thing that will stop you mm -hmm. is you is letting yeah. it get into your head. Oh, that sucks. No, right, and then you're, literally your body just shuts down because you're know. like, I just told myself – that I should stop in one mile, therefore my body like won't let me go past that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's scary in that sometimes you can't control it, but it can be powerful, and you kind of like teach people and, how and to it do is. that. Well, it's it's simple, like you know the word motivation, right? Yeah. I don't really believe motivation is like if you ever done drugs, is like doing drugs. Mm -hmm. You get a high, like perfect example. I can listen, let's use some of the big names. I can listen to Jocko or I can listen to David yeah. Goggins talk, right? I want to run through a wall, but then 10 minutes later, I can't run through that wall. Yep. What am I going to do? So my thing is, is like, I don't want to focus on the, because there's internal and external motivation. So like the first thing I do with like my coaching clients is like, do you work out? People mm -hmm. raise their hand. Yeah. Do you ever go to the gym and work out? Yeah. Do you ever put headphones in your ears? Well, that's an external source of motivation. You're True. listening to music and the beat. Do me a favor. Put the headphones in because I don't want to be bothered at the gym because people bother me yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. Don't put anything on. Oh my God. They're like, oh my God. Oh, I've done I, that before. I, yeah. Really? And just because have, what happens yes. when you see somebody at the gym and their headphones die? They lose their mind. Yeah. 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 My thing is, it's just yeah. like shooting a gun. It's out. No, let's use a gun. True. I don't need all the optics. All I need to do is dial in those, those so iron true. sights. That's so Stick true. to the basics. Once you do that, then you can add the other pieces and components. That's people do it wrong. They start with the external. And if it works like that with Damn, everything with huge. health, right? Yeah. Health. People look at each other, right? Like, wow, you two are in great shape. But 
I don't know you guys that well. Do you, do you go to the doctor? Do you that? So I do everything from the sure. inside out. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm taking all the, you know, Ross teases me all the time and stuff because I'm taking vitamins and I've got all the shit and I'm, I'm regimented, but I'm going on 49 years old and I'm out PT and 19 years old kids. Yeah. And it's because I've got it here and here. This Correct. doesn't matter. No, but I, I right. focus you started on this. With that. Yeah. Yeah. You and gotta sharpen else. it, you know, like, um, two lamb, uh, Ronan Taxis is a very good friend of mine. He's like literally a samurai. Yeah. And I broke it down to him. And, and this is how I came up with the mind is Can you grab my back a mind back? is like a samurai back, sword, back right? Ground. And a samurai yeah. will sharpen his sword. And then the difference between back, a back, real sorry. samurai and average people is, is once that sharp, that sword sharpen, they'll go hang it somewhere and they'll leave it alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you're not watching that 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 uh, sword every time, how do you know someone else didn't use it? Correct. So what a real samurai does is even when that that blade is razor sharp, he's still every day mm -hmm. trying Sharpens to figure it. out a way to sharpen even more. And that's the thing, you know. I want to be razor sharp, mind, body, and soul. So every day, like I have drills that I do. Mm -hmm. They're the dumbest drills in the world, but it's building muscle memory. What do you do? If you don't mind me asking. No, I don't mind. Like, I'll give you an example. I have a video of my daughter. First thing I tell people is when you get up in the morning, you need to have a motto, a motto of life. Like, my daughter, she is going on 12. She's a four-time state champion gymnastics girl. Dang. As soon as she, it, I, know. I tell people, you have to come up with a motto of life. So this is what I say. Every morning when I get up, right, I'm 48 years old. Sorry, I get up. I do my part of making the bed, Adam McCravens. I accomplish a task. Go in the bathroom. Go to the bathroom because I'm old. Is that from that book? Yes. Is it make your bed? Yeah. And then I look in the mirror, and this is what I say. I say it with pride. Be great today. Be a bitch tomorrow. I say it every day. Like, I like that. I am going to get up, give maximum output, and then in return get maximum results because life is about time plus effort equals results. Mm -hmm. Then tomorrow I'll take a break. Well, guess what? When tomorrow comes, I just repeat the cycle. Now, my daughter gets up, and she says, I'm a winner. Or excuse me. I'm a champion. I'm a winner. She says that every day before she gets up. And it's the last thing she says before she goes to bed. And I do the same thing. And I make my coaching clients, hey, use mine. That's smart. My one, my one buddy says, I am effing awesome. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it is. But it's all about programming. And what people tell me is, is Ray, you can't program someone. I'll tell you what. This isn't scripted, right? I want you guys yeah. to fill in the blanks. Just humor me. Yeah. Okay. What do you do before you cross the street? Uh, you look both, look ways. both ways. You look both ways. See yeah. that? Um, what does heaven represent? I mean, it's supposed to represent paradise. Is it supposed to be good or bad? Good. Oh, good. And hell? Bad. Okay. Is what temperature would hell be? I mean, burn. hot. It'd be hot, <laughs> right? Like okay. So my point is, is you've been programmed your entire life to think these certain to things. Think these certain things. So yeah. my thing is, is most people get up and they program themselves this. This is an average person when they get up. I could get up 48 years old. Holy shit, my knees hurt because yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah. Holy shit, my back hurts. Oh God, Honestly, I was thinking some of the things yeah. that I say when I wake up. I've yeah. got to tackle this project. I had to get up three times and go to the bathroom. Or you can get up like you won the lottery. And that's yeah. what I tell people. If you don't get up, because numbers, right? We're a yes. numbers person. Average person sleeps six to eight hours a day. Okay? Yeah. That leaves you about 16 to 18 hours a day to accomplish either awesome or nothing. Mm -hmm. An average person, 52 weeks, 52 times 80 is average. how, how long someone average can live. I literally only have, I've already lived two thirds of my life. Nice. So the thing is, is now for individuals, you know, it's never too early or too late to start. And the thing is, is the people that are younger say, oh, I got, I got 20,000 days. No, you have 20,000 days in a perfect, in a perfect world. In a perfect world. My thing is, is you have to live each day like it's the best. And, that, and the funny thing is, is some of the strongest individuals and some of the greatest lessons that I learned are from women. And I'm not just saying this because I'm on a woman's podcast, mm -hmm. my wife, mm -hmm. you know, because being married to me is a lot. <laughs> you know, you say I, I have a big imagine. personality. I mean, yeah. there are times, I mean, I am a handful. <laughs> sure. But, and the thing is, well, is. you guys are. And what people need to correct. understand is, is if you're a motivational coach or you're this, this person that's in the media, this isn't, I mean, this is what you see, but I'm relatable. Like, people need to understand that I have my ups and my downs. Mm -hmm. I'm not this Navy SEAL or this SF guy or this cag guy that's i kick ass no that's no one does that all the time Correct. Yeah. so i have a support element too. My, my wife you know i i lean on her i mean there are times when she has literally just said you are being a complete and utter baby a bitch stop and i mean <laughs> it's my reality it. check yeah, but that's why i married her yeah. You know? yeah and that's why i love her so much and you know the the saying is what is it behind every or with every great king there's a queen yeah behind every good man yeah is there yeah a well, great I, I don't know about behind because yeah. 
the queen in my book is who made this king because if mm-hmm. not, if it wasn't for her telling me to take risks, take chances, because that was the thing that I, I was a hypocrite about is when I got out of the SEAL teams and doing some other stuff with Matt, um, I was so scared to get in the business world and the podcast world that literally she said, you know, you talk to Kool-Aid, but you don't drink it. Mm. So she pretty oh, much called shit. me out and it hurt. I love that she <laughs> yeah. holds you accountable. Though. She holds yeah. me accountable and I love it, man. And I yeah. love her for it. I mean, that's a good couple right there. She's probably going to end up killing me if this coronavirus doesn't end soon. <laughs> I oh, mean, yeah. is it everyone? Oh, like, yeah. You know, I was trying to get an emergency <laughs> divorce and they wouldn't let me <laughs> yeah, wouldn't go through, dude. Okay, just, Mary just, Kate, calm uh, it down. Yeah. No. <laughs> and, you know, I just got back from California for filming for four days and I said, hey, they want me. She's like, go by. Yeah, and I was no, like, go by, dude. Even right now, I'm like, I can't wait to go to white and jump in california yeah. right now yeah, yeah. just yeah, it's, just it's one night just to <laughs> spread <laughs> out and she handles you know she handles the troops at home my, my wife yeah. actually we're blessed she's a stay-at-home mom which i could you couldn't pay me a million dollars to do that i mean she is Bro, it's a lot of work not it's, just my you know she's the the mom that like the the cinda brady or whatever you know the from the brady bunch she's the one yeah. that drives all the kids around yep. and the big suv and it's a lot it's a huge sacrifice i feel like I feel like shit sometimes that I didn't really make it because literally the people that do that are, it's crazy. It is. It's so hard, dude. I, I, I yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's I watched like, my mom do it and I don't even know how she did. It's a kind of hard and it's something you can't really explain. And there's this thing of like eating bonbons on the couch or this like stay at home well, thing. Like you are so busy and taken to the limits of your mental. Yeah. Life. I'm going to say something here and I'm going to get killed, but I got to, I got to, I got to address the elephant. So Years and years and years ago, okay. I'm going to lose a lot of followers, especially if you're females, for this. But let me finish. Hey, Mm. wherever the camera. We're talking about your failures. Um, This is a failure. Mm -hmm. I told my wife that being a stay-at-home mom was not a real job. Mm -hmm. Didn't go well. Yeah. Um, And then she said, "Okay." Uh, And did uh, she have you do? Oh yeah, she had me do it. She left for a while. But I thought she said she was going to New York, and she didn't. Fucking total chaos and pandemonium yeah. I'm trying to mm-hmm. give my daughter a bath mm-hmm. and all this stuff mm-hmm. and when I came back I was like oh my god I'm so sorry and she goes don't you ever yeah mm-hmm. talk to me like that again and sure. I'll tell you I I will me working going overseas doing all the things that I've done you know all the bad things the good things I told her I will do it a thousand times before and I mean my daughter's 12 now but now it's things are changing with her and I yep. don't understand she's becoming a woman mm-hmm. and emotions and yep. I can never say anything right or do anything right. So I'm just like, Mm -hmm. here's my wallet. Tell me what you're embarrassing me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a mental, it's something mental. Even being here, I am thinking about the kids way more than Ross is in the other room doing his show. It's just a, like, it's a thing you can't ever. That's that motherly instinct. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and so you're meant, it's mentally something that you have to deal with literally all day until they go to sleep. And even when they go to sleep, you're like, something could happen mm-hmm. yeah. you're never completely able to shut off that oh yeah thing because being a husband and a father is is the hardest thing that i've ever done seal training joke training that i've done overseas tv shows and all that crap nothing i mean that's easy but doing this because literally and it's funny in my house my wife runs 99 percent of things like i have one or two rules in the house like my daughter goes to a private school and I wanted my wife, you know, that was a th- that was our, our deal. Like you are a stay at home mom and you take care of everything. Like, I don't know. She does everything. I have yeah, no yeah. clue, but it's just easier that way. But yes. I am you know where I she is. Is. She she so out of it. my element because every day I'm learning something every day. I'm screwing something up every day. I'm putting my foot in my mouth ever. I mean, and that's <laughs> the, the advice that I could say is, I mean, thank you ladies for not divorcing us, but being married to anybody that's in, media or especially spec ops you combine it together we are a pain in the ass i mean my wife is just like yeah if you had her on here holy shit um we, we need to we can just chat yeah, can. And, 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 about you and she's a beast you know and that's the yeah. thing like she's my motivation she yeah. is my you know i always talk about you know the four f bombs and the foundation it's the foundation everything the faith uh she is the foundation of like i call it team care my household I couldn't do it without her. I couldn't, I couldn't be here because Mm -hmm. like I, I, as a father, you know, and a husband, we worry, but we worry about different things. Different things, yeah. But I know she's got a handle on it, you know, like. That's a great way way to look at it though, as a team. You're not two individuals. No. Right? Like, oh, you do your shit and I do my shit. You guys are a team working together, each taking on different tasks. Some has different strengths. Mm -hmm. Some has different, different, different weaknesses. 
and you guys come together and make it all work. You want me? You want me? Right? You want me? Blow your minds? Yes, please. Here, I'll give you a little taste of the uh, the honey when I when I teach <laughs> when I teach. Oh, oh. So it's this. So acronym of team, right? And you can apply team to anything. Yeah. Family, business, friendship. Yeah. T is trust. Trust in yourself. Mm-hmm. Trust in each other. Huge. We were talking right? about that today. Effort. You got to give you guys. Got to give a hundred fucking percent effort. With everything you do. I mean, mm-hmm. and that's it's weird. I don't agree with a hundred. Like who came up with that number, that system? I, don't know. I always say just give it your all. all like yeah. whatever you're, that is. You're you're hundred and you're hundred and the same thing. Like if we're running, could be two different things. Correct. But just give it your all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, Everything. A is attitude. You know, like I'll give you an example. Now I do a lot of business and closing people, and I work for Bedros Cooling, who is a eight figure entrepreneur, you know, empire builder, CEO of eight hundred gyms, and this is what he tells me: You are the world's worst closer. Like. He goes, but but I just closed like a ten thousand dollar deal yesterday. But I do it because I have a great attitude, mm-hmm. and yeah. then when I'm selling something, I believe in it. Like I don't sell, I don't promote, I don't, I'm not, I don't sponsor anything that I don't same. believe in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you People guys are the same. People can tell way. though. Oh yeah, People they can. can. But he did. He's like, you are the world's. But in the last like six days, I've generated twenty two thousand dollars in a time where no one supposedly yeah, has exactly. money. Yeah. And then the last one is M is mission and the mission isn't always money you have to figure out what that mission is whether it's the marriage mm-hmm. right i always use but money or it's mine is maturity yeah. <laughs> there's so many i use the m word yeah. um but if you can dial that in not only just with your wife but with your children with your your colleagues you two being co host yeah dude you're unstoppable and that's what i tell people and the people that quit shit like mm-hmm. you were asking about right team me Mm-hmm. They don't trust in themselves. They're not given a hundred percent effort. Their attitude is piss poor. Mm-hmm. And somewhere, somehow, some way, they lost focus on their mission, which was to accomplish whatever it was. And that's why they quit. Correct. So I, 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 I bring it all around. Yeah. And that's just how it is. And mm-hmm. it's possibly that they have other options. Which, if you really want to accomplish something, there has to be no other option. I, you right? know, I say it's funny because I say there's no plan B. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there are. But there is C through Z, and people go, that makes no sense. Well, I'll tell you what. It means <laughs> I'm going to be a Navy SEAL. I'm not going to take no for an answer. But if I break my leg, it's going to take me six weeks. That's C. If I get a fracture, yeah, yeah. it's going to – I don't believe in – and there's a plan B. Like, I was going to marry head. my wife. Like, yeah. that – Buds was a joke. Hell Week was a joke trying to get in – Sorry, trying to take care. Yeah, I didn't, that didn't sound right. Trying no, no, to. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I came out wrong. Trying to win her over. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no. We got some man That's fans. Okay. Don't worry, they're right with you. They're, they're right like, with yeah. you. I'm actually blushing. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> but it was. It was just like I wasn't going to take no for an effort. Uh, yeah. Finally, she was just like, "Okay, Christ, take me out. I give up." You know. But yeah, yeah. But that's consistency. It that's is persistence. That's, that's and that's part of my. And it shows that yeah. you're not just going to give up on her either yeah. when times get hard. That you're yeah. going to keep working for it and yeah. everything too. That's yeah. what people want. Because if you want it, you know, it's all about that consist. I, I call it repetition. Mm-hmm. Like I'll give you an example. You guys, when I did my first podcast with Jason Rebin, we sucked, but now we're getting better and better. Yeah, and this yeah. is what I tell people, and I don't believe in this. And I, I go around the country and I want to find out whoever said twenty one ninety lifestyle and habit habit and lifestyle. They're full of shit, man. Like. 21 days is a habit, oh, oh, 90 yeah, days yeah, is yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, I've been yeah. married for almost 17 years, mm-hmm. and I'm every day I'm still learning something, Correct. but it's repetition. I get up, yep. and I make sure I do certain things every day. Yeah. I tell my wife I love her. I tell my daughter I love her. I make them feel special. Um, every day, it's we're open 24-7. You know, If you want to be successful in whatever that is you do, mm-hmm. you know, like this podcast, yeah. it's not just coming on here. It's all the prep work, right? Yes. Plan your dive. Dive your plan. Yeah. It's about... AARs, after action reports. You have to be critical with yourself. Like mm-hmm. once a week, my family and I sit down and Lily, it's just geared towards me of what I can do better mm-hmm. because I am work in progress. I think we all are. We all are yeah. yeah. But my wife, you know, she has her moods with certain things, but I am the bitch of our family. I am. <laughs> I, I'm saying that around women. I am. I am a 210 pound diva. I'm and my wife is you, like, guys are, we though. are. I like, mean, as much as I love my I'm husband sorry. and how badass and tough he is being an SF dude. Has, was, how he, is he when he's sick? Because when I'm exactly. sick, the world ends. But my wife has had like, Lord have mercy. It's like, the she's end had of the like world. The, the swamp flu before with a 212 <laughs> degree it's fever. Not, still, it's not an option for yeah. us. Like yeah. we can't go down. Therefore we don't. Yeah. Do you know me, what I mean? 
man, when I'm down, I'm just uh. like, geez, help me. <laughs> so if it's I'm so not catering true. to him and I'm bringing him soup and like, oh, yeah. him every I moment, think women by nature yeah. are stronger. They, you, you have a stronger core than us. Now, maybe not physically as strong, but like, I don't know. You, you guys see, I hooked up that tens machine to me and I tried s- simulating yeah, giving, given. Did you mm-hmm. see that one I did? There's I no did not way see that, but I, we've seen it on multiple. There's no I way it's the same. And there's no way it's the same. I told her, I mean, I grabbed it. It shocked me. Take this. Nope. Right. Nope. But there's no way that that's even. It doesn't even equivalent. compare. But yeah. Either but way. You can't even they get that. a small little glimpse of it and they're like, I'm out. When well, my I wife gave birth it, both yeah. times, I'm like high five her. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Do I high five her? This is. It yeah. was the most beautiful no, thing I've ever no. seen. And she, I was just I like, is good. Yeah. you're amazing. <laughs> yeah. I would never want to do that. No, mm-hmm. God. And then I was like, did you, um, see it come out? Yes. I swore I wouldn't you, look. Yeah. But I didn't, it, it didn't bother it didn't me. Do, it was, okay. but I'll tell you the only, I was scared shitless. She needed an epidural. Mm-hmm. My son was the size of a Buick coming out. He was yeah, a yeah. monster. My daughter yeah. was tiny. Uh-huh. But when she came out, like when my son came out, there was some, there was some confusion because he looked Hawaiian. Ugh. So there was a second of like, because they do get look darker sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, so instead of that, it was like, bitch, we need to get DNA yeah. test yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, okay. You're like, excuse me. So but my a lot son of came out, and he, you know, black hair. Now he's got blonde hair. He looks just like sure. her. Yeah. But when my daughter came out, she looked like she was like two weeks old. She came out perfect. Oh wow. Red hair because I used to have red hair. Gorgeous. She, and but not a sound. So I am flipping out. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. god, she's not. Yeah. Alive. And I'm trying to like. Trish is going, what's going on? And I'm like trying to hold her hand. And for those who've given birth, her grip, it's, like, oh yes, I was like trying to see what was going on, but she's like pulling me down. Yes. And then I looked and then, you know, the doctor did her thing and then she started crying okay. and I'm like, literally, you know, I knew it was a girl. So I'm looking, I'm like, okay, she's got a little, you know what? Mm-hmm. I see our fingers and toes. She's good. You know, she's good, and then yeah. I, you know, cut the cord. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. cut the cord first, but there was no sound. And that's, that was probably that was, the scariest scary second. part of my life. Cause when my son was born, man, he was he letting was, everybody know. I'm, yeah. He was pissed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but then, you know, obviously doctor gives her to mama. Mama does her thing. Right. You know what the mamas do. Life was good. <laughs> and then I just sat there waiting like, okay, when I, when I get to hold my baby. <laughs> right. And right. then finally, you know, she was exhausted and then, you know, I was there and yeah. it, was, it was amazing. Good it's on amazing. you seeing that and um, like wanting to. Yeah, well, I, know. I well, swore I, I didn't. I swore to. I didn't. I'm gonna tell my husband. And that I've always, to. I always was told like, if you see that, I mean, like, you're never gonna wanna. Didn't L- phase listen, me like I that. work okay. with all guys. I've heard That's the horror good. stories that they'll talk about at work and be like, yeah. "Dude, I saw my wife give birth, and I'll never look at her vagina the same." And I'm sitting there going. <gasps> I don't want, no, Chris no, will never big, see me get yeah, I'm, not, I'm a big fan of it, so. I'm, not kidding. I'm kidding. I'm no. like seeing it. Yeah. He's like, no. I get turned on when the I'll whole, whole placenta comes out. It I did, all I saw was, I looked with the head. Then once that was done, she wanted me up there with her. Sure, you know, yeah. You know, just kind of the, you know, coaching her. And literally, I felt like she was coaching me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was a mess. I was a fucking mess. But, yeah. I mean, you know, you're just, she's bringing life in. You know, you're hoping that everything you did was right. Did you know, I was just, and we, our second one we did right too. Like, you know, I was like, she was in the gym, she was working out, Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there was no, you know, with my son, she was working. It was different times. You know, I remember mm-hmm. like when I was a kid, you know, people were smoking all oh, the time. Yeah. Oh, but the yeah. second one I said, man, we're going to have a super baby. Yeah. <laughs> I just want you yeah. working out, eating good. There and, you go. And yeah. yeah. And it was good. And six months to the day that Ni- my daughter's name is Nyla was born. She was back to her regular weight, kicking ass. Six good for months. Her. Oh my yeah. gosh. See, yeah, that's no, what I heard. Like it's to keep that up throughout. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Even if you think it's hard to do. I feel like the strength sometimes there's that, right? There's childbirth. And there's mm-hmm. also the strength to not blow up. Right. Yeah. So that's the strength of, I always try and think about like with Ross, like trying, the strength is to try and figure out as women, we're the ones that try and figure out what is, what is really going on with Mm -hmm. you, right? Like if you have a blow up, if you're pissed, there's something else always going on. Oh yeah. Right. It's always either something from childhood or some other thing that's happening or some other irritant, some stress about money, whatever. And the strength of the woman, I think is to kind of be like, what is that? And navigate that and pinpoint it. And I'm sure she does it with you. Oh, yeah. I'd be you're a sh- actually pissed about money. So just fucking forget it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She is. Or tell me what you're pissed tell about. Tell me what like, you're actually pissed about. My wife actually always knows what I'm pissed about when I don't Nathan. even. Like, you know. Yes. Some, little things trigger me. You know, bad childhood. You know. Sure. Been abused in every way. 
money, you know, I, I'm an overachiever, you know, it's like, and it's the thing I've, I've learned as I've gotten older, you know, like, you know, I want my wife to have the best things in life. You know, I right. want her to have the big house and this and that. And she tells me, I don't need that. I just need you to not be a dick. That's exactly and that's the thing, I but I'm still, mm -hmm. but that's the thing. It's like, but I am a dick. <laughs> so I know I am. I mean, I, I, I'm it's being like honest. You kind of knew this when secrets we got married. Out. Well, <laughs> secrets my out. wife thought I'd get better as I got older, but you we know, all hope, her, oh, we all kind of hope that in some but, way. You but. know, I told my wife, I'm, as I get older, I'm getting freakier. I'm, <laughs> sure. you know, I mean, but we have our fun and. The only things we don't really do that we used to do is we don't drink the way we used to yeah, just are. because I can't get up the next day. But Dude, no. working out, I mean, you know, I do all these crazy challenges. My wife for two weeks in a row with a bad shoulder has done the entire Jesus. thousand twenty push ups with me. Good. Now for she her. does have to shift and go to her knees a little bit. Sure. And you know, I mean, I'm not being nasty there, but and I love it because the thing is is everybody has an excuse. And this mm -hmm. is me reaching out to some of the industry's best athletes on the planet and they're like well I'm like man I'm you really got injured oh, hey, have this, Bert, Bert have told that. me he was going to do it a couple weeks ago but you know he's busy he I mean I'm like dude it's an hour of your time let's do it Bert damn you Bert 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 will um I wanted to talk a little bit about relaxation do you mm -hmm. do anything to relax <laughs> what kind of value do you put on okay. that or right, okay, okay i don't love to relax by the way no like, I, I'm not, I, don't I don't know how to like relax relaxing no culture. i have a really hard time with that recently yeah. i tried <laughs> i tried meditation <laughs> oh no but when i, I do it, it I when i breathe i want again we're all going to close our eyes i close your eyes i okay. visualize like these two paws like i'm a cat and i've got a ball of yarn and i'm hitting it back and forth really fast Oh my God! Is and that I'm medicine? And I'm trying to snow. It's not. Okay, I was okay. told this by the the got best. Got it. Got it. And I'm tr and literally what they do is tell me to try to slow the ball. You can open your eyes now because I was making fun of you. Um, <laughs> I wasn't they, doing this. I, I try to I try to you. slow yeah. the ball down. But this is what I've learned. There's some people who just are running at higher gears than yeah. others in life, and that's not a bad thing. You know, like there's some, like I'm the guy. I cannot leave. I'm OCD. I've got all these things. Oh, I God, can't yeah. leave a dish in the sink. I can't leave that. I can't huh? leave. I can't leave the house if the beds aren't made. I like wow. a couple Eesh. of your things okay. like this thing right here has been driving me nuts because it's not symmetrical. Oh, this whole yeah. office but, is probably driving you nuts. But what I've learned is, is like, I'll give you an example. Like my wife, she's neat as hell, but she's like, I'll leave the dishes in the sink. But before I go to bed, they're all done. Yeah. That's what I do. So her yeah. thing is, is she's like, this is what she says. If you fucking want it done earlier, then you do it. Yeah, exactly. I like to empty the dishes in the morning. She doesn't. But I make do it while the, the coffee's done. I try to be more efficient with my time. Her thing is, when I get up, I don't do nothing except drink my coffee, and then I'll get to it. Same. So how I've done that, the way that I relax is I just do what I need to have done when I want to do it. There you go. There you go. You know, like, and that's I'll, relaxing to you. So like, if, if you can't relax, well, what I tell, like I have a bunch of Fortune 500 CEOs that are looking for, you know, during this time of crisis, I'm not making the money. You want results? I'll tell you what you do. Buy a lawnmower and a vacuum cleaner. Go out and mow the lawn. Instantaneous, you see the lines. They're straight. I do it. I've, I, I, I mow my lawn nice. twice a week. I vacuum every other day. I need to see lines. I know I have issues, but I need to see gains and results. I try different designs. Lily, we're nice thinking about getting, I, I'm an idiot. I know, but my house is like, we have a clean. You know how many girls right now are sitting here going, I know. Can my husband Hello? be like this? They're going to make him listen. But I'll tell you <laughs> what. Honey, can you put addition away? I'll tell you what. Have your husband do it. He'll at first he'll think it's crazy, but if he's tense and he's losing his mind with working and everything, he'll feel great. I literally, I mean, and seriously, mm -hmm. like, let's kill a couple birds with stones. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. take off your shirt and get some sun, guys. I don't care if you got a gut or not. Get out there. Yeah, I, I had my, I made my wife stop cutting the grass because she's out there in a bikini cutting grass. People are stopping. I'm like, nope, <laughs> no, <laughs> nope, thank you. no more. We're but she likes, that. yeah, she's like, well, you get a tan. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm a guy. It's different. <laughs> you know. I do that. I have on our. There you I'm go. I'm riding in my swimsuit oh, a, when he's deployed. I'm like, Meh. I like a riding lawnmower. I know it's <laughs> yeah. not the exact same thing, but. No, I like to push. I mean, yeah. but the thing is, is you can do the same thing. It's just creating those lines yeah. is creating results. It's mm -hmm. creating movement. And I like that. And yeah. people think it's the dumbest thing in the world. But like, I've got guys that make, you know, millions of dollars that are out like telling, you know, their lawn guy, hey, I got the lawn. They're like, what? what? You yeah. pick the weeds. I even pick weeds. Like this coronavirus my house, my lawn oh my has God, never be. been so great. And then what we do as a family, because I'm so crazy, is we go through each room and we've cleaned it out. Smart. Like all Dang. the years of shit just piling up, mm -hmm. we get rid of it. And we donate it. 
And then after I got done with that, I was like, well, what can I do now? Well, shit, the neighbor's got some. My neighbor's <laughs> husband's deployed, and yeah. she's got two kids, and they were sick for a while. I'll start cutting their grass. Aww, then gosh. I'll start pulling their weeds. Yeah. It's just like doing good things, yeah. but it's... You're staying productive. Is, it's is there therapeutic there your, to me. Right. Is there yeah. anyone in your family that gets to relax around you? Or is it kind of like, let's go? When I'm away, my wife can relax. Okay, there you go. <laughs> She's like, go. They're very go, chill. Go. Like, my son is very chill. Uh, my wife is very chill. My daughter, is, I mean, is very chill, but she's still an overachiever. But, like, Trish, like today, I called her. She slept in today. Like, she didn't have to get up. She slept till like, which is unheard of, like, 9 o'clock. I think you That's need fine. a chill person. She though. does. Yeah. Well, to balance, Just to it's balance a good balance. you out a little bit. I can't even sit and watch a whole movie. I actually even, don't like that either. Even honestly. in a the theater, I have to get up. I have to move. I can't. Oh, in really? the theater? Oh, I'm a mess. I, I really? even have to stand up. Well, I got bad knees yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff too. But I have to do. So if I decide to relax at home and watch a TV show or watch a movie with yeah. my husband, I'm doing work during it. Yeah. I Here's can't. the thing. I don't get like Ross goes into like these float tanks things. Oh, yeah. The deprivation the chambers. Deprivation chamber. That what? to me I've sounds like. So it's like you float in and it's. I mean, how would you explain it? You're floating in water. There's no sound, no light, no nothing. It's supposed to be the ultimate of tranquility, meaning you don't know up from down, down from up, because... uh, You feel like you're just floating in space, and there's... Now, I've tried that before, and the only thing I literally do is go... Seriously, when I'm in there in my mind, I go, fuck, where am I? Because I don't know where... I like... I don't know where I am. It sounds like a nightmare to yeah. me. My mind would be going I just, stop. I don't want to be... I know... I don't know if that's part of it, but I don't want to be alone in yeah. all my thoughts i used to and starting yeah. to think about shit i don't want to i used to sit about. in the back of an sdv for 12 hours with four giant guys cra- cramped in a boat like this yeah, under yeah. Water, totally wet i i've been in my tranquility yeah, pod it sucks you <laughs> it know sucks. <laughs> seriously it sucks. but the the smallest things bring me joy i've le- if i've gotten older like i'll give you an example me and my wife right now we're watching dexter mm-hmm. we're watching okay. yeah we watch that so like um, I did not last night, but I, when I was in California, I got two episodes ahead of her. So last night I drove in, got in late. Yeah. She watched one of them. So tonight when I get back, we'll watch that. Now that's about, you know, I think a, a show, if it's an hour long, um, with hour. the commercials, you mm-hmm. get, it's 44 minutes. You get, right. a, so for 44 minutes now I can sit still. That's good. Um, but it just depends on her mood if I'm sitting beside her cause we each have our own couch, but <laughs> Love it. it's the, the little thing. So my point is, is. I don't. I don't think there's any real right way yeah. to find that peace. You just yeah. got to figure out what works for you. You know, yeah. like what works for me. And I, meditation doesn't work for me. Yeah, I call it relaxation culture, right? Where they're like, get in the bath. Uh, now, ice, meditate, everyone's relaxed. Ice baths do help. Really? Oh, but, see, that's what I'm saying. Everyone's bath, definition of it though is yeah. so different. Like I feel at peace when I'm falling in the sky and I'm under a canopy. There you go. There you go. Sky, like I do. Like when I'm under that canopy, of course you're like you know heads on a there swivel. You go. You are, know, are you look, jumping uh, civilian rig or what are you jumping? No, I'm free fall jam. Okay. So uh, it's just one of those things where you, yeah, you're just kind of like, ha- yeah. you're ha- I'm happy. Well, my I'm question with peace. that is, are you a JM to the point where you're jumping the PDs or are you still jumping um, MTXs? So we jump civilian rigs. Yeah, so, so we we'll jump civilian PDs, yeah. rigs, but we also um, so I was a test parachutist. Gotcha. And so we test it. So we we teach and train in RA ones. Yeah. Yeah. And how to do the BOC throughout for all the new guys yeah. who need that. I got thrown off the jump team, but that's another story. Did yeah, you? Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. We can talk you about that. that was never. Fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You I didn't would even, never. I didn't even get. Ex- I didn't even get. So to- you're on a Halo team? No, 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 no. Oh. Let me rephrase this. So, so you're when- actually on the jump. No, 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 no. Leapfrog? Stay with me. You didn't even Leapfrogs. get that far. I applied to the Leapfrogs. <laughs> yeah. Crushed it. I ran. You have to do a fitness test. Yep. When you do it, you have to jump. Now, I was one of the few guys that was still jumping the um, MTXs, but okay. like. We had a guy, I hate him. His name's J.C. Ledbetter. Do you know J.C.? Why does he sound familiar? He's a god with the air. He was a, he was a swick guy. Well, okay, guys are jumping know. 190s, so that means you have a lot more maneuverability. This is much smaller canopy. Smaller. Square square and I'm running a, 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 a MTX, which is huge, yeah. and I'm like pulling on the risers. And like, let's say this is the, the, the drop, the landing X. I was landing like there and here, and everybody else was like four feet closer. Sure. So he was just getting on me, getting on me, getting on me. So then we have to do the run. So I pass those. We do the run. I run a mile and a half in like under nine minutes. This is why I mean young. And then after that, what you have to do, and this was my favorite, and I like to sing. You had to sing the national anthem in front of like a group of like 20 women (laughs) that were hammers, that were hammers. Oh, say, you know, and you, but you have to wear the jumpsuit. Yeah. Uh Yeah. Chest out and singing. Oh my God. I feel like you could do that. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I was was throwing the chest. Yeah. 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 Everything out. Sure. Sure. 
And so. then after that was done, you go home. And I was hanging out with a, a couple guys that were legendary in the SEAL teams. Turbo and Lash. Mm -hmm. Legends. Like Turbo lost his leg in Robert's Ridge. Well, anyway, they were asking me how it was doing, and they were pissed off because I decided to do that than to go try out for Damn Neck. Okay. They were all over Damn Neck, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, it went well, except for this one guy, and his name's JC. And uh, they're like, what do you mean? He's a SWIC guy. I'm like, yeah, he, he's, but he's really senior. Like, Show us the write-up. So I showed him the write-up. You know, I had it out in my car because I just got back, and yeah. we're at a bar, and lots of drinks were going on. Sure. And this is the old flip phones, and... While you're doing that, you have to play the game. So I'm like calling um, uh, Marco Shibaro and the whole bunch of the guys that are on the team. Say, hey, man, did I get picked up? Well, you'll find out in two days. Uh, you know, and that's what they want to hear. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, when it was done with, I'm trashed. Turbo reads that and goes, let me borrow your phone. Okay, sure, man. Calls. So he just hits redial. Asks to speak to JC Ledbetter and then literally, uh, I, I guess, it. threatens to kill him. I knew it. <laughs> Yeah. So and then you're you're done. So that Monday, I'm driving to do something, and I call oh. my. His name's Gus Kaminsky. He passed mm -hmm. away. He was my bud's OIC. He was the lieutenant in charge of it. And I said, "Hey, I haven't heard anything." He's like, "Yeah, man, we we just can't take you from what happened." And I'm like, uh, "What do you mean?" Yeah. And he was like, "You know, well, when I graduated, buds, you have to go to another course called STT." I got into a fight with a guy and I put a bottle on a guy's face. He was underage at a bar, and it just kind of gave me this reputation and then you know fast forward to like eight years later and then this and he's like we just can't have it and I didn't even know what happened mm -hmm. and then finally like my buddy Marcos called me and said dude you called and cussed out and then I even had those guys call and say like it was us we we don't respect what you do and yeah. you know I was like because they're all you know SEAL Team sure. 6 guys and I'm like <gasps> I thought they were helping me out, and and he was just like, "Yeah, dude, we don't need you." And Bro, too much problems. Yeah, so but it, it ended up for the good because sure. that's when I was starting to date Trish, and you know I yeah, think yeah, everything yeah. happens for a reason. You already done a lot, traveling all the time, yeah, 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 jumping in and hot women. You almost did that yeah. on purpose, I think. <laughs> yeah, don't you think? Yeah, sometimes we just sabotage to get something better, right? But long story short, yeah. you just gotta watch. Sometimes you gotta watch uh, <laughs> who you give your phone to, huh? Right. Hey, Sometimes well, I've been in that community. Well, I've been in that community before where you tell like older guys in a very similar community things that like, you, you know, they know everyone. And yeah. then all of a sudden it gets back and you're like, oh, I didn't want you to say anything. Yeah. I was like yeah, telling yeah. you as a friend, man, but, mm. like, let's not. Lessons learned. You know, that it wasn't it Lessons wasn't it wasn't learned. it for me. I, there, there's always a learning point in something. You yeah. know, what? I love jumping, but I think it would almost ruin it if I was on a jump team. Like I love testing things out and jumping all the time when we did. But I think being on a jump demo <laughs> team or doing that all the time would kind of lose that thrill yeah. and the love for it. It just become yeah. now a job. So that's probably a good thing. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy where I'm at right now. I think you know I'm. I'm 48 years old. I'm finally starting to really get into my my niche. You know, I'm doing a yeah. lot of fitness. Yeah. Doing a lot of these courses that I've been doing with Pedro's Coolian and the online coaching, and then we go around to businesses and work with them. I love what I'm doing. You know, so much that I stopped my other job that yeah, I yeah. was doing for about 14 years. And uh, yeah. So say so you got out at 12. You got said, out at 12. And then you did this other job after you got out. Got out. At yeah, I work. I worked for the. You know, I worked for a group. Yeah. You know, um, for about fourteen years, deploying overseas, doing some stuff for some people. And so, what made you want to go into kind of the entrepreneur realm and starting your own business and podcast, oh, everything I, like that? Well, it was one. I thought I had. I people always liked hearing my story of how I've kind of overcome and conquered things. Mm -hmm. Two, I was just tired of carrying a gun and and you know like. I want to do good. You know, I, I mean, and don't get me wrong. You know. You know what I used to do and mm -hmm. the guys yeah, yeah. do and going overseas and justifying what you have to do for the greater good is fine. But I was like, you know, I'm 47 years old and I'm still kicking indoors. And we have yeah. a couple guys that do it because they want to that are 60. I mean, they're animals. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm only home for six, maybe four months a year. Mm -hmm. My kids are growing up. I lost the relationship with my son because of because I was gone so much. Yeah. My daughter, every time I go home, she's either sprouting something new up or, you know, like girl yeah, stuff yeah. or she's totally changed. My wife, I'm passing her within the hours. And I said, you know, and I mean, I'm making good money, but I know I have more to offer. Yeah. And that's how I ran in. I met Bedros Cooley at a speaking event and everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. I've been working with him full time since January and it's only been two weeks since I literally called my old job who's I work for one yeah. seal. And I said, I'm, I'm hanging up my cleats. And he was like, wait a minute, you were getting ready to run a country and we were giving you, you know, $1,200 a day. And I'm like, more important yeah. things than money. And he's yeah. like, I get it. I get it. 
So you know how many times I've heard that? You know what I mean? Like just later on down the line a little bit. Oh man. Where yeah. even my husband, for example, he in three years, two and a half, he's you know, he could do certain contracting jobs. Yep. And even part of him was like, I don't even know if that's something I want to do based upon if, you know, we have kids by then or he's like, I'm sure money will be great. It, he doesn't but trust you. Know what I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's just one of those things where later on down the line with certain, you know, even people who reached out to me with certain jobs, certain agencies, right. In different doors. Mm -hmm. They were all telling me, Hey, it's fine. You can get into this job and we can get you into this. We would love you in this program. Oh, yeah. And, but, and then I told them my dreams and aspirations to have a family yeah. one day and they're like, Oh, for sure. Yeah. You good luck that. with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. they would even tell me their stories and they were so honest. Like, listen, I love my job, but I literally have no relationship with my family as much and i have yeah. missed out so much yeah. and if you want to prevent that then just don't go and even take this and i was yeah. like thank you for telling me the truth you want to like, talk I appreciate about it. regret i should have if i could rewind you know years and years and years and and be doing this now i would man because yeah. that's the thing i mean but the thing is is my wife's like jesus christ bart i hate using that word we well, just get the hell out of this house you're driving me nuts but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she's still even with that she likes me being home sure. yes. you know i mean i've been blown up i've been stabbed i've been shot at not shot thank goodness yeah. And I'm just like, there's got to be an end to this. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then you start living. I got to, I know the time you got to start, no, li good. you live by that way. Like you make a shit ton of money, you pay your taxes and you spend it all real quick because yep. you know you're going to get more. Now it's like, I'm actually this, I get Thinking. paid every two weeks. Like the military, mm -hmm. I haven't been paid every two weeks since 2004. <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> so, you know, now I, I, the, the bank, the bank account isn't doing this. It's just nice. doing yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's time to grow up. And even yeah. my wife, you know, she's so fucking cool. She was like, you know, babe, we're not making as much because we take a whole lot of money out for taxes and get the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. But I have a lot of perks at the end. And I, I, she says, I'll get a job. And I'm like, that's why I love her so much. I'm like, no, man. Yeah. I got this, you know. And she doesn't go without, you know. But I've just, my whole perspective has changed. I mean, there was a time when I had $220,000 sitting in the garage just of mine, the Range Rover truck and then the custom built hse super you know the custom built defender and then you know she had Heck hers yeah. because <laughs> when we first met we used to do, we did this she i like she was married before and then i uh, i told her you're not keeping the car i'm getting you something so i got yeah, her an yeah. altima mm -hmm. and then i had the range rover and then it was like then she got a forerunner and then i bought her the lexus and then i bought her the you know the infinities and and then right. as she's doing that now i'm down to a, a nissan pickup truck yeah. because I don't need it. You know, yeah. before yeah. it's like, I don't know why I needed that shit. Yeah. I wish I could rewind and get that money back. So I used to make all these impulsive purchases. Yeah. I, a lot of this, I feel Cause like I wasn't, with I bonuses wasn't, and stuff like that. Yeah, Cause I wasn't happy, time. you know? Yeah. And now it's like, you know, I told her, Look, cause you don't really think of the future in that way. I no. see a lot of like now when I make money, I'm like my daughter, you know, my son's getting ready to get married. He's 26. I'm like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to help him yeah, put yeah. a deposit down on his house. My daughter, you know, she, She's like me, but she's awesome. She's not a dick. <laughs> and she does, re she's really athletic. But when, like when she turns 16, you know, I want to get her, I want to get her a kick ass car. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just want to yeah. be that dad. And, yeah. you know, we go on more vacations now and stuff. And yeah. I don't worry about it. It's like, you know, the vacation is $8,000. Okay. I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I, I used to stress $8,000. I know. Yeah. Whatever. You know, yeah. let's go Time again. Time to spend together. It's yeah. memories. Yeah. You can't, you know, like when you die, you can't take your money with you. Correct. I don't have any money to take with me. So <laughs> there you go. So I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Well, I like the relatable part too that you talk about because we kind of talk about that too. Like the best, when we're, we come into the studio sometimes mm -hmm. we're like our fucking husbands or whatever. The, the, no. the best thing <laughs> that you can do to someone, I mm -hmm. think, is to be like, me too. Like yeah. that, I I did that exact same thing. I fucked up in that exact same way, and then people are like, "That's a powerful thing to be able to like talk to people about failures that are the same as." I theirs. wish you would talk. I'm going to give you my wife's number to you because she thinks I'm the only one that fucks up like this. I told her, I am. No, I no. am one of millions. I mean, <laughs> well, men are yeah. we're we're idiots. Men are idiots. I mean, I'm saying this. I don't know where the cat. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you too, there's a lot of times us women think to ourselves, do we get that one idiot? And then we talk to other women yeah. and we're like, yeah. oh. Well, could or you ease her mind that, that she didn't doing. get the only, yeah. Even stuff that we did that we're like, man, I fucking did, you know, fucked up. It's like, dude, I've done that. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing Correct. more powerful than being like, dude, I fucking did that too. Did right? you ever so wish your husband, okay. would, did you ever wish your husband get like hit by a bus or a truck or? <laughs> Because I think she has. <laughs> Sometimes she looks she at me. She may have. She may have. Yeah. 
<laughs> just her. Just her. Just her. Yeah. <laughs> just her. She oh, may no, have Ray. to know. You're fucked. That's just you. He yeah. was looking for the. Oh yes, I oh, yeah. wrote that too, yeah. Jesse. You really I screwed that one up. Yeah. I couldn't relate with you. I set it up. I should have. Yeah, right. Thanks. Um, not a bus. Just because that's so gruesome, right? Just like maybe a bike, just, a road bike. Maybe just a nine. You know, just like a sprained a ankle. <laughs> just a nine night. You know what I mean? Just a, just calmly in the sleep. Just roofie? like a, just a maybe kick a roofie? in the Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe just like Oh, you're talking about death. Co- I thought you were talking about like just have him getting hurt. No, just like a coma. Do you know what I mean? Just, <laughs> just for like, like a week or two? Oh. Oh. Maybe longer. Maybe like a month. <laughs> She's like, are you serious? Just like a month, and like it's not gonna hurt him, like brain damage wise or anything like that. And like yeah. he'll wake he up and be really the exact sleep. same. <laughs> but just, wow. just a quick coma. You guys are vicious. <laughs> just cold joking. blooded. I'm man. not saying that. <laughs> and we're not saying. But that you're they thinking don't. it. You're thinking it. You're no, smart. he goes away on a deployment, so I'll get my time. There you go. See, I don't get that. <laughs> I get my like, space. Yeah break yeah you know what i mean now you have how many kids i have two two how old two boys i have a six-year-old and a 21 month old <laughs> which i hate saying the month but it's like you're one of those I moms it's fair it's to like say. i'm 13 and three quarters i don't remember well you know until they're two yeah, yeah. it's like cause I'm every month my is so months. every month is so different yeah. i always like to say two and then people are like oh well but when is he i'm like shut the fuck up yeah. kids are, kids <laughs> he's are, one or he's two do you like do you do you ever wish you had a girl no Girls are. We talked about this before. It's different. Yeah. It's di- it's scary. Like it, oh my god, don't tell. It yeah, scares the shit out of me just because I know All myself. The thi- yeah, yeah. You know what I God's mean? God's punish. Like most, you know, I know a lot of SF guys and. And whatever branches we have, girls, because God punishes us because of we've all joked the, about it. In or Sierra. it helps you to it's calm the, down. It's called and the mature, curse, right? Yes, yes because you no. know, like things that I used to either watch or joke around about. Shit ain't funny no more. You know, not when you have. Right. Mm-hmm. Not when you have, and my, like, my daughter is really developing. She's a gymnast. Her, like, I married way up. My wife is, like, super hot. She looks, you know, I, it's weird to say that, but she looks like my wife. I'm not saying my daughter's hot because that's kind of creepy. No, no. But she's beautiful. Yeah. And it's like, I just know how I was as a kid and mm-hmm. how I was. And I'm like, fuck, man. Because right? I will, I will kill a. 11 year old that, is, yeah. that might be mine i don't know oh no that's fine then <laughs> um i didn't think it was on but uh yeah the guest is fine but you will kill i mean just the stress of that and then the hormones thing so how old is she she's gonna be 12 in august mm. you're there not is, even there starting. yet bro. oh no no but yes yeah, i am girls start periods yeah. but not real there yeah like you're at the very beginning girls are developing even younger nowadays though oh yeah she has like, like i mean i don't want to get but yeah she no, is no, but developed like, that's what but i'm saying it's also like yeah you but start and it's like uh, things have changed, you know, mm-hmm. like as a dad, I used to give her a bath yeah, mm-hmm. and like I used to dry her off and I used to help her yeah, go to, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And, and yeah. now it's like daddy. And I'm like, oh yep. my God, she's yeah, a yeah, woman. Yeah. And well, I don't, even yeah. now with my husband, cause he has a daughter with his ex, like she's six. Even now she's still kind of like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. she kind of has to be like, Hey dad, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. And he's like, let me know if you need help. But with a boy, you know, it's oh, easy, yeah. man. Like, Hey yeah. man, oh, this is the, yeah. Dad's been here. Let me help you with this. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. Yo, no, that's normal, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but like. But girls are like that too with each other, though. Yeah, I think so. But like. Because even with his daughter, she's with me, like, very more comfortable and, like, <sighs> grabbing things and talking about my muffin. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. She's like, oh, but see, like, like, my yeah. son's always been a mama's boy, and he would come to me with our things, and that never changed. Mm-hmm. My daughter used to be a daddy's girl, but now. I know. Correct. Well, she can't she, with certain she's just, changes. Yeah. Mom, you know, it's like, dad, dad. You know, well, daddy, I don't like dad. I, it makes me feel old. Daddy, I, that's my rule. Right. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and now with this whole Corona Kung Fu thing we have, she used to do gymnastics all the time. Now she she plays outside and she plays on the computer and I hate video games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. hate them. Yeah. But it's like, she does her work. She's still doing great in school. What can I do? Hopefully, I know. You know, hopefully they turn the switch back on. But yeah. We don't want to make them girls, weird Amish Girls kids. are awesome, but as a dad, it sucks. Because you, from the minute, I mean, I remember still the day that I held her, she grabbed this mm-hmm. pinky with her little hands and did a little yeah. thing, you know, you don't, what the hell is she doing, you know? <laughs> and they say, you know, you read the books where they can't, des- you, you, all that shit goes out the yeah, way. Yeah. She knows I'm her daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my girl. Yeah. It just, you know, with my boy, it was like, oh yeah, I got a boy. He's going to go out and chase some ladies. But now I was like. Oh no! Now what do I do? Because yeah. all the boys are coming, and I will. Like I said, I will. I will kick the shit out of eleven year old kid. Yeah. yeah, I will. I mean, I'll whoop him. I'll hold him too. 
I'll you hold know. I'll have I have friends that'll hold so them. So for the moms, it's the scary part is just yeah, the hormones, the hating. You know, you hate your mom for a second. Whatever yeah, it is, you always go through that yeah. moment of having to separate. Mm -hmm. So your son had to kind of do that with you too, where it's like you have to fight in order to separate yeah. that bond kind of thing. But dang, that's it. Just it sounds horrible to have your daughter like fighting with your daughter and hormones and all of this so it was scary like with my sons i don't know what it's gonna be like but i don't know i don't think we're gonna fight like uh, when they get about 14 to there's 16 some hormones they're still too yeah and they like to go out and chase with, the ladies and i've right. caught my kids sneaking out and no shit i wanted to punish them i mean i had to but i was like you're like then you thought about all this stuff you did back yeah. in the day well we yeah. didn't i couldn't have you know back then we didn't have security s systems and he can't sneak out of my house so he'll go over someone's house he and would then sneak, sneak out yeah, from yeah, there. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. my house is they a get fortress. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. They get crazy. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah. You <laughs> you can't I mean, I have motion dispensers. I got everything. You can't you can't get up and take a leak in my house without me knowing. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. He's like, What is this? Yeah. It I mean they appreciate crafty, it when it all. when it works. Yeah. So yeah. that's for sure. Well, do we want to get into the broette? I think I want to know who his Me broette too. would be. So on this show we do a uh, drinking broette of the week mm -hmm. and it's someone can be, I mean, should be uh, a woman in your life that is has either gotten you to where you are, or that you admire, or that you, know you want to. Mm -hmm. I know who it is. It's Trisha, and we want to hear a little bit. Trisha more. Ann Kerr, it's my wife. She's, she's, a, she's uh, a drinking broette because she is. She, she should be at the, the top. Yeah, she is. She is the founder and the creator of Team Care. She is the. She's my anchor man. She's yeah. uh, everything she does. She keeps me. She keeps me in line. She keeps me in check. Um, She's the one that has helped me redefine what my core values are, um, my morals, and, uh, you know, just she's helped me. We've had a lot of similarities in her past with childhood. She's had a lot of bad things happen to her, too, as a mm -hmm. child. And, and uh, seeing how she dealt with it kind of helped you. Helped yeah, you she's, uh, you know, I mean, she's still finding out a lot of stuff from her childhood that's really odd, but uh, yeah. it's weird. But, um. She just keeps it together so well. That's why I, I you know, she's my drinking broet. So I salute you, Trisha Care. Yeah, Trisha. cheers, Tr Trish. I feel like we need to have Trish on. Do it. I dare you. Again, I was hoping we. But you were, can't talk but... about me. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, God! Right. No. You know we're gonna be talking about you the whole time. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll be like, did you ever wish that he was hit by a bus? Oh, or... God. yeah. <laughs> and and she then we'll be like, we'll get the real before answer. Before I even finish the sentence, she'll be like, what? Yep, bus gun. And she's what? from Brooklyn too, so she'll let you know. Oh, heck yeah. 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 I there love you it. Go. Well, well, thanks so much for coming on. Thank yeah, you. This I is really great. It. This was fun. Will you come back? Yes, ma'am. And now you're going on the bro. I have a feeling we'll probably be shaved asked this to be time. On. I don't know. Wait, you see. shaved last time? Yes. He used the manscape last time and <laughs> shaved. And listen to this. Put his pubes on. Was it I Dan's? blew him on him. Blew his pubes onto Dan. I have so much more respect for you now. So much more respect. <laughs> I mean, we love Dan, but. Mm. You gotta fuck with the and guy. The Come on, Bert. He's uh, he's starting a little podcast too. Oh yeah, yeah. About no. something failure. else. I did. Something else I did. Something yeah, else I did. That Bert, he's gonna Bert do. is my shadow. Look, you're my you're shadow, welcome. Bert Coons. You're welcome, Bert. You're welcome, Bert. For everything that Ray has done. I made Bert the man he is today. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end on edit that. that out. Edit yeah. that out. <laughs> I want to get them two on together. I dare you. I right? dare you. Oh I would god. love it. I just want to sit here. We'd and probably listen. fight. I don't oh, care. Yeah. Just but it'd be cool fight. to get your ass kicked by Burt Coons. I'd be like, I'm getting right. my ass kicked by Burt Coons. You're like looking at the camera. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Well, we enjoy you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, you've been watching every move and plotting your next move.